We have already seen how to compute uh, shortest paths in networks or graphs. Uh, if the network doesn't have any weights, then we can just use the breadth-first search algorithm to find shortest uh, paths. If we have only positive weights, then we can use Dijkstra's algorithm, which we discussed in the context of greedy algorithms. Now we will uh, generalize the class of networks and we will consider also networks that may have negative edge weights. In that case, as we will see, Dijkstra's algorithm does not work and so we will construct a dynamic programming solution to the problem of finding the minimum cost paths. The algorithm we will discuss is considered one of the most um, well-known algorithms in computer science and it's referred to as Bellman-Ford algorithm. It's also the, the basis uh, behind several routing protocols in the internet, including uh, the protocol RIP and uh, the protocol BGP. I will not talk about those protocols here because they are usually covered in computer networking um, courses. Your reading for uh, this class is uh, from the textbook, section 6.8. So let's start by defining the problem a bit more clearly. The minimum cost path problem. We're given a graph, which uh, in the more general case it is directed. And every edge has a cost, which may be now negative. So we will denote as uh, C with subscript VW the cost of the edge from V to W. And additionally, we are given a source node and a target node. We want to find the path from S to T, if it exists, of course, that will give us the minimum cumulative cost. In this case, this, this blue path. Now, you may be wondering what do these negative weights mean? Uh, they don't have a very clear meaning in the context of transportation networks. Think, however, of these edges as financial transactions in which if there is a positive uh, cost, it means that you have to pay some money. If there is a negative cost, it means uh, essentially that you are getting back money. So consider the problem that I have some property. It may be that I have a house. This is the original state of the house. And I want to sell the house after making some um, changes in the house. So T will be my final state of the house before I put it on the market. There are various things that I can do in the house. For um, some of these uh, changes, I may get some money back, for instance, from the government if I make the house more environmentally friendly. So if I follow, for instance, this path, the total amount of money that I will end up spending to go from S to T in that case would be 19. And as you can see, there is no other sequence of such uh, transactions that I can do to go from S to T at a lower cost. Let's see now that uh, there is no way that we can use Dijkstra's algorithm in solving that problem. Remember that Dijkstra's algorithm is based on the node that is closest to either the source or the set of nodes that we have explored so far. And at that point we are committing that we know the shortest path to that node. In this case, for instance, given that the target is immediately uh, is directly connected with the source, we would uh, commit that the shortest path is uh, the direct path from S to T. Note, however, that there is another path which has more edges, but the net cost of that path is actually minus one. So it's better than this path, which is plus one. Also, as you know by now, um, just adding a constant in, in all of the weights of the graph to make them non-negative would also not work. In this case, the uh, minimum cost path is actually the lower uh, path, which has a cost of uh, 3 instead of a cost of 4. If we add plus 3 to all of the weights to make them uh, non-negative, all of a sudden the uh, minimum cost path becomes the upper path, which has a cost of 10 instead of 12. 
Now there is something interesting happening when we may have negative edge weights. For example, in this uh, portion of a directed graph that you see, there is a cycle in which the net cost, the total cost, is minus 1. Essentially, if our goal is to go from S to T with a minimum cost, we can stay in this cycle as many times as we want. We will keep reducing the cost of this path. Theoretically, we can reduce it down to minus infinity before we actually get to T. So when there is a negative cycle in the path from S to T, then it is meaningless to ask the question, what is the minimum cost path from S to T? So let's consider now the opposite case, that there is a path from S to T, but there is no negative cycle in that path. What does that mean? There must be a sequence of edges that we can traverse to go from S to T without actually traversing any edge twice. How many edges can we have in such a path from S to T if the network has N nodes? Well, in the worst case, we will have a line network where every node connects only to the node at the right. And of course, in that case, how many um, such edges can we have in the path from the first node to the nth node? We can have n minus 1 edges. So the length of any simple path from a source to a target cannot be more than n minus 1. Please remember this point because it will be important in the next couple of uh, pages. So let's now think how we can uh, solve this problem using dynamic programming. As it usually happens with dynamic programming, the most uh, important and the most difficult question is to identify the sub-problems that we have to solve. So ultimately, we want to be able to compute the minimum cost path from a node V, any node V, to a target T. And we now know, we now understand that if there are no negative cycles, then this minimum cost path cannot have more than n minus 1 edges. So this gives us the idea of having the following sub-problems. What is the minimum cost path we can find from V to T if we can only traverse I edges? For example, if I is equal to 1, perhaps there is no path that can take us from V to T. In that case, you could say that the uh, minimum cost is infinite. If I is equal to 2, it may be that there is a path that can take us from V to T, but it may have a large cost, say, of 10. If I becomes um, 3, however, it may be that we can find a better path that can take us from V to T, say, with a cost of minus 1. So, more generally, let's define as OPT I, comma V the length or cost of the minimum cost path from V to the target T if we can only use at most I edges. Right? So ultimately we want to solve this problem. We want to solve the problem of how to find the minimum cost path from the node V to the node T if we can go through at most n minus 1 edges. Why n minus 1? Because we know that if there are no negative cycles, any simple path in the network can have at most length of n minus 1 edges. All right. So now that we have um, a good definition of the sub-problems, let's see how we can structure our recurrence equation that will express the solution of each subproblem as a solution of smaller subproblems. Our base case is that if we have only zero edges, then of course uh, the cost to get to the target is, is infinite. And on the other hand, uh, the cost to go from the node 
t which is the target to the target is uh, zero and and that is basically for um, any number of uh, edges other than the base case we can separate here two different cases one case is that this minimum cost path to go from v to t actually includes at most i minus one edges in that case the solution of this problem is the same with the solution of this problem because we know that the optimal uh, path from v to t includes at most i minus one edges so even if we have one more edge we're still uh, going to use the same optimal solution that we had uh, with i minus one edges the opposite case is that the optimal path the minimum cost path from v to t uses exactly i edges so how can we then solve this problem we can think of this optimal path that consists of i edges as one edge that will take us from node v to some node w plus the optimal cost to go from w to the target if we have i minus one edges right but of course we have to ask ourselves what is the node w that will minimize this sum right we only need to consider nodes w that are neighbors of v namely there is an edge from v um, to w in the set of uh, edges e so which of the two cases here should we use in every case it depends which one of them will give us the lower cost so we will end up with a recurrence equation that either uses this or it uses that depending on which of the two things is smaller so this is a straightforward um, implementation of the dynamic program that we saw in the previous page um, notice here that i'm using a matrix m uh, to, so to store uh, the optimal solutions of all of those uh, sub problems the matrix m has uh, n rows um, one row for every node of the network and n uh, columns uh, one column for each value of i from 0 all the way to n minus 1 which is the maximum possible length of a path so uh, this matrix stores the um, optimal solution of the problem m i comma v for all values of i and for all uh, nodes uh, v uh, there are some initializations here that cover the base cases that we talked about and then the actual work is done here we are computing the elements of this matrix column by column for every value of i here you see basically the recursion um, the uh, optimal solution to this problem is either the optimal solution of this um, smaller problem where we, we consider paths of i minus one edges or uh, this um, part where we consider edges from node v to node w and then the optimal path from w to the target as long as we can use at most i minus one edges so uh, as you can see the space um, requirement of this algorithm is um, big theta n square because of this matrix which is n by n and the runtime complexity is big theta m times n we consider every possible edge in the graph but only once right now if we also um, need to keep track of the actual shortest path not only the cost of the shortest path but actually the path itself then uh, together with uh, each of these entries in the table we have to um, record also the next hope so here is an example um, that you can also find in your textbook here is the target here is the matrix m with all the values of i uh, we have six nodes so i can go up to uh, five and we have um, the nodes here in the rows of the table the initialization <coughs> is the first row and the first column 
and then we're computing the columns of the matrix one by one. Notice how the distance uh, from a certain node to the target can gradually decrease as we consider paths that are potentially longer and longer. And as I was saying earlier, for each of these elements of the array, you need to also keep track of what is the next hop that you are using uh, in order to get that minimum cost. So for instance, uh, to go from B to uh, the target, uh, when we can go through paths of length at most 2, then you see the optimal path is this one. It has a cost of 0, right? And the next hop is no D. So here, together with the cost, we should also remember that uh, we need to use the node E in order to get this cost. If we do that for every element of the matrix, then we can easily find the path, the optimal path, from every node to the target. There is a more uh, space-efficient implementation of the Bellman-Ford algorithm. Instead of having the, the matrix M, which is n by n, we can have only a single column, n by 1. We have one entry for every node in the graph. The element of this column that corresponds to node V is uh, the cost of the optimal path we have at this point from node V to the target. Of course, this cost will be gradually decreasing as the algorithm executes. So we only need to remember essentially the uh, last cost we have discovered so far for each of these nodes uh, V. So initially, we uh, of course uh, set these costs to be infinite except from the target where the cost is uh, zero. Then we go through an iteration again as in the previous algorithm, considering all the values of i from 1 to n minus 1. But here we only consider those nodes w for which there was an update in the previous iteration. This means that for that node W, we now have a lower cost to go to the target than in the previous iteration. So, if there is an edge from a node V to that particular node W, then, and only then, we check whether the cost to go from um, V to the target is greater than the cost to go from V to W and then from W to the target. If that is the case, then of course it's better to use W as the next hope, the successor in the path that uh, originates from V. And we update um, the element uh, M of uh, V. Another uh, thing to notice here is that the algorithm can actually terminate prematurely even without all of these values of i if we have reached an iteration in which none of these elements of the column M have been decreased. In that case, if nothing has changed in these elements for an entire iteration, it is certain that nothing will change also in subsequent iterations. And so we can uh, terminate the execution of the algorithm because we have found actually the minimum cost for every node to the target.